Hello everyone, in this tutorial what I'll be covering is the PHP include command and before I get into what the include command does or how to use it, I first want to provide an example on why exactly we need to use the include command. So as we know for a typical website or for a typical basic websites, we have a header, we have a body and we have a footer. And among these different pages in our website, they usually have a common header and a common footer. And the body is the only section of the website that usually changes. So just to provide a live example of this, I found a random website online that implemented the same typical layout as a basic website. So here, of course, we have our navigation links to our different pages and we have our logo. And then at the bottom, we have this footer and in the middle of this we have different content and what we notice as we go to other pages we have the same logo we have the same header with the same links to different pages of the website and scrolling to the bottom we have the same footer the only thing that's changing here as we go to different pages is the content again going to about tracy again we have the same header same logo so i'm pretty sure most of you already know this but Let's say, for example, we only have HTML knowledge. We don't know anything about PHP or any other languages. How exactly will we implement this? So only knowing HTML knowledge, what we would do is we would have, let's say, for example, we only have these four pages. We're not including these different pages within this blog, but let's say we just have these four pages here. We will have to manually go into each page and add this same logo or the same header for each one of these files as we want this same common header and this consistency among each one of our pages right and we want this same footer for each one of our pages so let's imagine if we had maybe 20 or 100 of these pages and maybe two months down the line we want to add a new page or remove a page we will have to go into each one of those pages and modify that change. So again, if we had a hundred pages, we'll have to perform that operation a hundred times. And that will include doing it a hundred times for the header and doing it a hundred times for the footer. So this is where this PHP include command is really going to come in handy. All right, so here's just another example that I came up with illustrating the same issue that we just discussed. And let's say, for example, we own a candy shop and our candy shop has a website and on our website, we have a home page. We have a products page. We have a about us page and a contact us page. And what we notice here is each one of our pages has a common header and a common footer. And for each page, the only thing that's changing here is the body. And I have these things underlined just to indicate which page we're looking at. So, again, Going back to what we just discussed, let's say, for example, we wish to add a blog page or a news page. We will have to go into each one of these pages and manually edit each header. So this is four times or really eight times we're having to make changes to our web page. So if we think if we have 15 pages or we have 100 pages, we will have to perform this operation 100 times. So what exactly can we do to prevent from having to do this? All right, so here's another diagram that I came up with. And let's try to pay attention to only the boxes for now and ignore the lines in these boxes here. What we see here, we have the same scenario. We have a home page, a products page, a about us page, and a contact us page. And again, we know that the headers are common for each one of our pages and the footer is common as well. So wouldn't it be great instead of having to update four different pages, wouldn't it be great if we can have a single file whose job is only to contain the links or the navigation bar for each one of our pages. So if we add a new page or a new link, we only have to edit one single file. And that goes for the footer as well. Wouldn't it be great if we had one single file whose job was only to contain the footer content? So with that being said, if that's possible, why can't we just include a header or a link to this header file? And the same for the footer. Why can't we just include this footer.php file? And we go to the products page. Why can't we just include this header.php file and the same for the footer? So since the 
homepage, products page, about us page, contact us page is looking at the same header.php file and it's looking at the same footer.php file. So if we make changes to this header.php file, it's going to be shown this exact same way on each one of our pages. So instead of again updating four pages or 15 pages or 100 pages, we just made one change to this header.php file and now all of our pages reflect this same exact change or this same exact new link that we just added. So now that I went over a new technique that would make our lives a lot easier if we needed a common header file or a common footer file, let me show you how to actually implement that with the PHP include command. So looking at this new document that I have, I have some HTML code as well as a PHP scripting block. And let's say that this document here is going to represent our homepage. So below this, I'm just going to write welcome to the candy shop. That's just going to be the name of our company. All right. And we're going to go ahead and save this file as let's put this in a new folder as well. This is going to be its own website. So we're going to name this candy shop. And inside this folder, let's make this file called index.php since it's going to contain PHP code. So next, let's create this common header file and this common footer file. So I'm just going to create a new document here. And I already have typed out the different links that we want on our web page. So here, looking at what's going on, I have a home, a products link, about us link, and a contact us link. And again, this is just basic HTML just a hyperlink to each one of our different pages. And I have a comment here indicating that this is the header content. So for this file, I'm just going to save it in that same folder, candy shop, and I'm going to name this header.php. And it's a common practice. If you're including a file, name that file with a .php extension. So definitely remember that I will be putting that on the quiz. So in a way, we're going to name that the header.php file. Easy to remember and we know that that's the header file. So let's do the same exact thing for a footer. Let's create a footer file. And again, I have this already typed out for your convenience. So again here, I have a footer content and the only thing I have here is copyright 2010 thecandyshop.com. So again, I'm going to save this. I'm going to name it footer.php since it is our common footer file. And again, with a .php extension, even though it doesn't contain PHP code, again, it's a common practice to name it with a .php extension. So going back to our index file, we would normally place our navigation links right above the body, right? As I just showed you in our slides. So that's exactly where we want to put this include command. So just a prime example of what's going on here before I even type out the include command. What I'm saying here is if we want our header links to be above our body content, this is our body content. We would normally put it here, right? But since we have this special PHP include command, we're replacing all of this by a single file which contains that. So all we have to do is type include parentheses, double quotes, the name of the file, which we named header.php, ended with the double quotes, the parentheses, then a semicolon. And you can just write out a comment here, include header content. So again, what's taking place here is we're including the content that's inside this header.php file. So again, going back to our header.php file, it's going to grab all of this content and basically replace it where this include command is. So again, you can think of it as being I had a links without that PHP include command. That's basically what you're going to see if you look at the page source file. So hopefully that's making sense now. So I'm just going to change it back and we're going to do the same thing for our footer. We would normally want our footer to be after the body content. So again, here I have to start my PHP scripting block again. And we're going to type include parentheses, double quotes and footer.php. And in comments, we're just going to say include footer content. And then end our PHP scripting block. 
So again, here, just to explain, again, we're including the content that's in the footer.php file. So we're taking this content here and placing it exactly here where we have this include command. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this index.php file. And quickly, I'm going to make another file just to provide a, an example of why this is useful. I'm gonna copy the content that's in this file I'm going to paste it in this file and here we're going to make a products page and we're just going to put here list of our products all right so we're going to save this let's name it products.php and the reason i'm naming it products.php is if we go in our header.php file as we can see for the link to this products page, I put products.php. So normally you'll probably have a link to your website, but since these files are in the same folder or same directory as my header.php file, I can simply just write it as I have it here. Again, this is just basic HTML knowledge, so I won't really go into that. So again, here we have our products page. So now let's create another page and I'm gonna copy what's on the products page just to make it easier and quicker to get this all typed up. I'm gonna have this about us page and you might write some more content about yourself. And I'm gonna save this as about us.php. Save it. And let's create one more page. And this page will be our contact us page. All right, and let's save that as contact us.php. All right, so now let's go into our browser and actually see what's been displayed here. 